السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأولين والآخرين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وبعد Dear brothers and sisters welcome to a new uh, episode of Ask Huda uh, the phone numbers are, as usual, area code 002-0238-555-248-249 and the email address is ask at huda.tv. Without any further ado, I would like to begin by uh, answering some of the pending questions. Muhammad from the KSA said that he sometimes notices the Aisha prayer and the Taraweeh prayer are gone at the same time. Is it permissible? I believe he is talking about whenever... Uh, some people come late and they uh, start a jama'ah. So the first jama'ah of Aisha is finished. And now another jama'ah would, st would establish, would start. Then uh, the imam of the local masjid would begin his taraweeh. Uh, the Prophet ﷺ forbade establishing two jama'ahs in the same masjid because uh, that blocks the means of leading to a fitna or conflict. Somebody is leading a jama'ah and another person leading another jama'ah. But this is a different case. And that's why what I recommend is this. If somebody walks in late and miss the Isha, then you can actually join the Imam who's praying the Taraweeh. He will be praying Taraweeh and you will be praying behind him with the intention of praying Isha. So he finishes the two units and you resume and complete the four units because Isha is four rak'ahs. But if another jama'ah started immediately after Isha and uh, the congregation in the masjid would not wait for them to finish because that would give them a delay and now in many countries Isha is already late and Taraweeh will take a couple of hours they can start because these are two different uh, salah inshaAllah can we give some money to feed hungry people in Ramadan? Of course, it is highly recommended. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was the most generous of mankind. Uh, whatever he would have, he would give it away. And uh, sometimes he would not have food for himself and his family at any of his houses for uh, three days. Nothing but water and dates. And for a whole month and two and three, they would not kindle fire. They would not uh, start fire to cook because there is nothing to cook, sallallahu alayhi wa But meanwhile, if he were, ha were to have a mount of gold, he would give it away uh, entirely and he would not wait. He would not save it for a day or two, sallallahu alayhi wa And since you brought this up, uh, it saddens me to know that, mashallah, we're enjoying the different types of food and drink at iftar and suhoor and in between. And we have brothers and sisters in Somalia who are starving to death, who are starving to death. I just want to tell you one thing which I may have mentioned before, that we enjoy multiple ni'am, favors and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we do not realize nor recognize until we miss them or any of them. When we starve during the days of Ramadan, that should inspire us and make us feel that there are other people who are starving but without a hope that they will find food at iftar time. Without a hope that they will find food at suhoor time or any time and they die out of hunger. They starve to death. It's a shame on humanity at large that there are countries who waste tons, hundreds, thousands of tons of food I know that there are some big, big time countries. They rob in the ocean hundreds and thousands of tons of wheat, of eggs, of condensed and powdered milk in order to stabilize 
uh, and keep stable the prices uh, of uh, the food stuff. It's a shame on humanity. If we're talking about human rights, these people are desperate one day. Perhaps, may Allah protect us, one day we will be desperate. So humanity have to rush to help one another and save lives. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran in Surah Al-Ma'idah, من أجل ذلك كتبنا على بني إسرائيل أنهم من قتل نفسا بغير نفس أو فساد في الأرض فكأنما قتل الناس جميعا ومن أحياها فكأنما أحيا الناس جميعا الله has ordained on the children of Israel and on every nation as well that one who kills or is a cause of killing a single person it is similar to killing entire, the entire humanity all mankind and one who saves a human soul, a human life, he is as if he has saved the entire humanity at large. Over 10 million people are starving to death due to the drought. And we eat and we drink and we are careless. Please, I urge every Muslim in Ramadan, send your zakah, send your voluntary charity through the legitimate organizations in order to distribute food stuff, food and water, on the people who are dying out of hunger and thirst, those are our brothers and sisters. I know that there are some people, some princes, who are wasting their money right and left. Somebody is carving his name in a mountain and somebody is doing whatever. I don't care about others. The Prophet ﷺ said, لا تزول قدم عبد يوم القيامة حتى يسأل عن أربع. No one simply will be dismissed on the Day of Judgment and will be <coughs> pardoned before having to answer for four questions. One of them is about his wealth, every penny that he has earned. How did he earn it? And how did he spend it? We are required by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by our deen, by the traditions of the Prophet sallallahu to rush to help our brothers and sisters in Somalia. Please do not forget that. Uh, and of course, we make dua for them at every iftar, but meanwhile, we have to chip in, we have to help financially, I mean. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, لَن تَنَالُوا الْبِرَّ حَتَّى تُنْفِقُوا مِمَّا تُحِبُّونَ You can never attain piety and righteousness, unless if you give in a charity and spend for the sake of Allah, not just in spending, out of what you love. وَمَا تُنْفِقُوا مِنْ شَيْءٍ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ بِهِ عَلِيمٍ Whatsoever you give in a charity for the sake of Allah, Allah is fully aware of it. He will multiply the reward thereof. Min shay'in is anonymous. Anything. To the extent that the Prophet said, اتقوا النار ولو بشق تمرة If all what you can afford is one day, split it into half. Save one for yourself and give half of it. Half qajur can save you from the far of hell. I don't want to speak much about this, but please, please, do not forget your brothers and sisters who are dying out of hunger and thirst in Somalia. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ramla from United Arab Emirates. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum, Dr. Sir. Wa alaikum, assalamu alaikum. Uh, Dr. Sir, my question is this, that my husband allow me uh, of my all abadat. He allow me doing the hijab the way I want. I, uh, I wear the uh, 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 abaya and proper, I don't wear makeup, everything. But my husband don't allow me veil. So what should I do now? Your husband does not allow you to do what? Ramna? Yeah, he don't allow me to wear a veil, you know, naqab. Naqab, He allow so, me to okay. wear the proper abaya that I wear, my body never shows. Okay, I, I don't see. wear makeup, everything. But whenever, uh, whenever I ask him about my, uh, I want to wear naqab also, he okay. said no. Okay, okay. And you guys are living in the UAE? Okay. Yes. I will answer you, inshallah. In the same order, I receive your question. Okay. Uh, Yahya from the case. Hey, assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi. Go ahead, Yahya. How are you doing, bud? Wonderful. Alhamdulillah wa shukrullah. Uh, my question is that is it a sin for males to hang their pants below the ankles? And, okay. And uh, if it's not, then like in, during prayer, like are we supposed to fold them? Or should we just leave them as it is? Okay. And my second question is that um, in Islam, is there any dua before fasting? Like, because in, in India, they have this dua, I think, uh, something like this. What is it? Or 
before what we saw me ram or the never to shahr ramadan something like this i'm not sure okay Wajazakum. Thank you, Yahya. Okay, Barakallah Fiq. Okay, um, uh, Muhammad from the KSA also says, does this count as sadaqa or zakah? That's a good question. Given money uh, counts as sadaqa or zakah depending on your intention. But given food, it's got to be during sadaqa to fitch time. But if it is zakah to mal, the zakah that is due on your worth, it must be given in cash. It must be given in cash. Poor people are uh, are in, in, a, in a better condition to know what they are in need for most. So I'm not allowed just to distribute pants or jeans or t-shirts or whatever and say I bought them clothes or shoes. But if I give my money to an organization, a non-profit organization that collects the zakah fund then sponsors families, orphans. So it is like the father for them. They can buy for them their basic needs and suffice for their needs. But as a payer, as a zakah payer, I have to pay it in cash. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Fawziya from Nigeria. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. Um, I have two questions. Go ahead, sister. Um, the first question is about Tarawih and Tahajjud. Mm. I heard that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam do not pray both in one day. I heard from um, some scholars that he either prays Tarawih or Tahajjud. So the question is... Um, can one pray both in the same day? Okay. Okay, I got your question. The second, uh, I got your question. Okay. The second question. Um, I received a gift from somebody that I only know the person to be working in a conventional bank. So um, I'm afraid, can I use the money? If I cannot, what else can I do with it? Okay. Thank you, Fawzi. Jazakum Allah khairan. Uh, Brother Muhammad from the KSA. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam, Sheikh. Go ahead. Uh, Ramadan Karim, Sheikh Salah. Uh, Ramadan Mubarak. Happy and blessed Ramadan to you and to your family. Uh, Sheikh, I have one question. Mm -hmm. uh, can we pray? Uh, now we are praying Tarabi with Vitel. Yeah. Can we uh, pray Tahajjud? Okay, that's similar to the previous question from Fawziya from Nigeria. Okay, we'll join the answer of the two questions together, inshallah. Okay. Thank you, Muhammad. Barakallahu feekum. Um, what advice do you have for a woman who's having an abusive relationship with her husband? Uh, this is a question from Dina from Egypt. Uh, are there any hadith or indications from the Sunnah in this regard? Uh, Subhanallah, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in one hadith, خيركم, خيركم لأهله, خيركم لأهلي. The best of all of you are those who are good to their families. Not good outside, and when they come home, they're abusive to their wives their children? No. Those who treat their wives, who treat their spouses, and their children uh, properly with mercy are the best of mankind, are the best of the believers. Furthermore, the Prophet ﷺ said, وَأَنَا خَيْرُكُمْ لِأَهْلِي And I am the best of all of you to his family. So he is the best of the best ﷺ. And in one hadith, when the Prophet ﷺ was discussing the husband-wife, rights and duties. He said, وَلَا تَضْرِبِ الْوَجْهَ وَلَا تُقَبِّحْ Don't you ever slap her in the face or slam her and uh, don't you abuse her verbally or physically. So Abdullah ibn Abbas was talking about a darb by the miswak in order to discipline. By fist fighting, this is called an abuse. 
uh, this is an abusive relationship. And uh, the Prophet وسلم, said, وَلَا يَضْرِبُ إِلَّا لَئِيم. A person uh, who treats his wife in such way is not the Muslim that the Prophet وسلم, desires to have in his ummah. Is not the person who practices the traditions of the Prophet وسلم, He's a slicky person. لَئِيم وَلَا يَذُو بِاللَّهِ He said وسلم, also, مَنْ لَا يَرْحَمْ لَا يُرْحَمْ one who does not have mercy on others will not be eligible for Allah's mercy on the Day of Judgment. And here as well. So one has to be merciful, especially with his family members, with his wife, and uh, with his children. If uh, a woman cannot tolerate uh, this kind of life, of course she can ask for a divorce or khul. And in this case, she would not be blameworthy. She would be only blameworthy if she asks for a divorce without a legitimate reason. Then it will be as the Prophet ﷺ said, Haramun alayhi ra'ihatul jannah. She will not find the fragrance of uh, paradise. If she just asks for a divorce uh, without a legitimate reason. But an abusive person whom she consulted many people, uh, asked family members to speak to him, and he is like that, and I'm aware that there are husbands who are like that, in this case, she can ask out and she will be uh, granted uh, uh, divorce or fasq separation by the court or by the Muslim judge. Uh, we shouldn't take it all the way to that extent, but if it is the last resort, then it is permissible for her to do so. So I remind myself and every uh, husband to be merciful with his family members, to be kind to his wife, to treat her as the Prophet ﷺ uh, ordered us. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Marian from Jordan, assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Mute your TV, Marian. I called and I had a two part question. Um, the one question you answered, and the other question you didn't answer, so I wasn't sure if you were going to cover it today, but it was regarding my nine year old son wearing dish dash. It's coming. Mom. Yes, it's coming. Uh, I'm concerned for that. Yeah, it's coming right now. Okay, I didn't realize. I didn't realize. And the other question I wanted to ask you um, is: my situation is that I'm living in Jordan alone, and my husband's in America. He's working, and he comes to visit. I'm here for the sake of the Arabic and for my children. So, would you recommend a family being apart to avoid living in that country, or would you recommend the family being together and suffering the negatives of that country, living in that country? And these are my. Uh, two questions. And the third one, please, if you have time, uh, just to recommend a good tafsir for English-speaking Muslims. Okay. As far as a good tafsir is Ibn Kathir, the abridged tafsir of Ibn Kathir, and it is published by Dar es Salaam publication. It's available both in hard and soft copy. Okay? And I believe that will be not just the best, but the only, uh, but also the only available tafsir in full in English. Okay? As far as your uh, nine-year-old son dresses in western clothes if you mean pants and shirts it is permissible it is permissible to wear uh, pants and shirts and suits and t-shirts as long as I do not imitate by that the fashions of the kuffar the rub pants the husky pants uh, the look jeans this kind of stuff uh, I, I see unfortunately some youth are just imitating the western fashions blindly they go to the masajid, they, they have a problem because they want to be Muslims. Meanwhile, they want to imitate the non-Muslims. So they go to the masajid to pray with those low-cut jeans or drop pants. And when they make ruku or sujood, the underwear will be showing. Why? That's the fashion. That's not permissible. But قُلْ مَنْ حَرَّمَ زِينَةَ اللَّهِ الَّتِي أَخْرَجَ لِعِبَادِهِ وَالطَّيِّبَاتِ مِنَ الرِّزْقِ If he's wearing a nice uh, shirt or t-shirt or suit and uh, nice pants, uh, loose, they're not tied, they're not revealing the details, that is permissible. If he wears a school uniform and he goes with it, permissible. I like to see uh, people wearing the top. You guys call it dish dasha in Jordan or whatever. The top, because it conceals the aura properly, and it is loose, it is very comfortable, but other outfit is not prohibited as well. Okay? So take it easy on your son, as long as he dresses nicely, just uh, alert him to the issue of not imitating the kuffar in the way he dresses. Muhammad from the KSA, Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa barakatuh. 
Sheikh, what is the strongest opinion regarding when you join Imam in Ruku? Do we get the Raka or do we need to repeat the Raka again? If you, if you join the Imam in Ruku, then you say Allahu Akbar while standing, Takbiratul Ihram. Then uh -huh. say again Allahu Akbar the second time to go for Ruku and manage to say Subhana Rabbi Al Azim once. While the imam is ruku'ah, that counts as raka'ah, and you're exempt from the recitation of Surah Al-Fatiha. Okay? okay? I answer a brief answer because I discuss this in details, I believe, in the beginning of Ramadan. Mahmoud from the KSA. Salam alaikum, Mahmoud. Salam alaikum, Shaykh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you? I have one question, Shaykh. Sure, uh, before uh, three days, I am I am forget uh, I am forget uh, after uh, Adhan Al Fajr I am drink uh, juice. What do you mean? I didn't get the question. Muhammad, can you repeat it and slow down? Uh, I forget forget I am drink uh, juice. Uh, you drank after Fajr. You drank juice after Fajr, after the Adhan? No, after Adhan, after Adhan. Okay. I, yeah, I am, I am I forget. Thank okay. you. You drank juice, not juice. Okay. Uh, any person eats or drinks while forgetting during the fasting time, during the days of Ramadan, uh, is forgiven. If you remember while the food in your mouth, spit it out. The juice in your mouth, spit it out. Do not try to induce vomiting because inducing vomiting would void the fasting. But whatever you swallow, fine. Even if you remember later on, just ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. This is a condition in which the Prophet sallallahu described as Allah fed him, Allah gave him the drink, and he pardons him because he did that out of forgetfulness. The Prophet sallallahu also said, an الْخَطَأْ وَالنِّسْيَانُ وَمَسْتُكْرِهُ عَلَيْهِ Actions, prohibited actions, which are done due to accident, uh, forgetfulness, or one is forced to do it. Uh, there is a threat, a life threat, or an injury threat, or whatever, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will pardon such person and he will not be uh, uh, blameworthy for it. Uh, this is a very important question from Sister Ummu Faiz from Sweden. Yesterday she asked about how can a person be, how can a Muslim keep balance and be a moderate Muslim? What are some indications that we have become too extreme? Very, very important question. A man came to the Prophet وسلم, a Bedouin, and said, Ya Rasulullah, inform me about what Allah has ordained on me. He said to pray five times a day, uh, unless if you want to pray extra, the tatawa, the nawafil, and as far as fasting to fast during Ramadan, unless if you want to give uh, extra tatawa, voluntary fasting, plenty, Mondays, Thursdays, three days of every month, Ashura, uh, the 10th of Muharram, the day of Arafah, the 9th of the month of Dhul Hijjah, etc., etc. These are all nawafil. The only fasting which is ordained by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the month of Ramadan. Hajj, once per lifetime, unless if you want to do more than that, this is all voluntary. Zakah, likewise. So the Prophet sallallahu indicated the, 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 the four acts of worship, which are the pillars of the deen, in addition to the fifth, which is the shahada, of course. And uh, he said, this is what's mandatory. If you fulfill it, you're a Muslim. You're a good Muslim. So the man said to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I swear by the one who sent you with the truth, I will never do anything extra, nor will I diminish anything from my deeds. Once the person left, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Aflaha in Sadaq. He will be successful indeed if he can just stick to what he said. And he also said in another narration, if any of you would like to see somebody will be from the dwellers of heaven, he is one of them. If one can just take to the fara'id without diminishing uh, their performance, 
without losing any part of it, fine. But the fact that all of us are negligent, we daydream in the salah, we lose khushua, and in the siyam, we may get involved in vain conversation, or, or, or. So that's why we do the nawafil, fine. So now we know the importance of fulfilling the fara'id, fasting, prayers, zakah, and hajj once per lifetime. And we do the nawafil in order to complement and complete, complete any shortcoming that, that it may have happened while performing the fara'id. Next, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the sacred hadith, ما تقرب إلي عبدي بشيء أحب إلي مما افترضته عليه. There is nothing can bring my servant closer to me better than fulfilling what I have ordained on him. You've done with this part? Yes. وما يزال عبدي يتقرب إلي بالنوافل حتى أحبه. And my servant will continue to draw nearer and nearer towards me. How? How would you walk towards Allah? How would you draw near to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Through offering the voluntary acts of worship, nawafil before and after the prayers, voluntary fasting, giving extra charity other than the zakah, going for umrah and hajj more than once, these are the nawafil, which the, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the hadith, will bring you closer and closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As far as the haram, it is very simple. The prohibited acts, you can count them on your uh, hand fingers. <coughs> The Prophet ﷺ said in one hadith, uh, Whatever I prohibited you from, you must abstain entirely from it. Do not go near it. Zina, drinking, uh, gambling, uh, in transaction, uh, riba, for instance, a few things. If we avoid them, then you are a good Muslim. But the problem is, somebody who is round to his nose, in the sins and in the ma'asi, he looks at the person who prays regularly in the masjid as an extreme. The person who perhaps takes his wife out wearing no clothes, and does not mind that his wife is giving hugs and kisses to others, to other men in front of him, because he's modern, he is a liberal, he is secular, he is whatever, he's a democrat, whatever. Such person looks at a, an, an, another person, if he sees my wife walking with me and she's wearing hijab, even ordinary hijab, these guys are extreme. If he sees any person wearing a beard, he considers him an extreme. If this is uh, called extreme, then guess what? The Muslims are all extreme. But this is not the case. I don't want somebody to take things out of context. I didn't want to say, me is like that. Because I know that somebody is going to cut and paste and say, the sheikh says, I'm an extremist. No. If you stick to what the Prophet taught us and ordered us to do, only the fara'id, you're a good Muslim. In the sight of a person who's maybe Muslim, but practicing the deen, you're an extremist. You're an extremist. You're a fanatic. Can you imagine? People who uh, would like to pray the five daily prayers at once in the evening when they have time because they say, Inna Allah, rahim. Allah is of forgiving, is the most merciful. Would look at those who are very keen to pray Fajr in the masjid. Uh, these people are extremists. So, this is the difference, it's relative. If you want to be in the company of the Prophet وسلم, in Jannah, then follow his footsteps. Rabia ibn Ka'b al-Aslami, a great companion. When the Prophet ﷺ offered him a reward, he said, send me, ask of me. He said, Ya Rasulullah, I'd like to be with you in heaven. The Prophet ﷺ said, do you have any other request? He said, no. I would like to be with you in Jannah. The Prophet ﷺ did not take out the green card and say, this is an easy pass. You're going to be with me in Jannah. He said, well then, in this case, you have to work for it. Pray, do plenty of sujood. We know that it's only 17 rak'ah, 34 sajda a day. That is the far. So what is the meaning of bikasrat sujood? Do plenty of sujood. The nawafil. The nawafil. Bottom line is, life is short and brief. If you like to be with the Prophet وسلم, then study the Quran, read his sunnah, see what he used to like, and try to imitate him and copy him in it. See what the Prophet ﷺ disliked 
and hated and forbidden and entirely abstain from it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guard all of us to what's best. Assalamu alaikum. Ansari from United Arab Emirates. Wa assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. You should be from Medina, Ansari. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Yes, it's my family name, sir. Mm -hmm. Uh, first of all, Sheikh, I'm very, very happy to have this opportunity to talk to you. I you too, like I'm you very happy. Thank very you, I'm sorry for calling. Your way of talking and everything. Jazakallah khaya. Uh, sir, I wanted to ask a question. and uh, It's not a, uh, it's a, like a personal question that uh, we are in a lot of debt. Um, my father passed away two years ago, but after that, me and my brother were started working. But we are in a lot of debt. So mm. is there any dua or something that would help of us? Course. In, uh, of course, there is a dua prescribed specially for your case. Okay? Yes, I'm going to okay. say it in Arabic and uh, if you... Uh, uh, Sheikh, uh, one more request. Could you uh, please give the reference so that I will remember, I will uh, learn it by heart. I oh, am going okay. to tell you right now, okay. please, everybody remember to buy, to purchase this little booklet the pocket size book, which is known okay. as Hasnul Muslim, the fortress of a Muslim. Again, published by Dar es Salaam publication. Uh, and uh, there is another version by Dr. Muhammad Ismail Muqaddam, may Allah uh, preserve him. These books are really a fortress for the believer, these supplications, especially uh, when you read the verses of each and every hadith and the translation, of course. And it has a transliteration. You can read it in Latin letters for those who are not Arabic speakers. You say, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-hammi wal-hazan, wal-ajizi wal-kasal, wal-jubni wal-bukhl, wa a'udhu bika min ghalabati al-dayn wa qahri al-rijal. Abu Umama, may Allah be pleased with him, was a companion who was in debt, was round to his nose in debt, and was overwhelmed with problems and uh, conflicts, hardship. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asked him, what is the matter? He told him. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ya Abu Muhammad, shall I not teach you a dua? If you keep saying it in the morning and in the evening, Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala will settle your debt. How? Don't you ever ask this question. Because it is Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala who takes care of everything in a blink of an eye or before that. إِنَّمَا أَمْرُهُ إِذَا أَرَادَ شَيْنْ أَنْ يَقُولَ لَهُ كُمْ فَيَكُونَ and he will give you a way out of your difficulties and hardship. He said, certainly, Ya Rasulullah, so the Prophet Sallallahu taught him this dua. You will find it in the adhkar of the morning and the evening. Please keep saying the adhkar of the morning and the evening every day. This is our shield and our protection against the shaitan, against the worldly disasters, against death, against the humans in, uh, uh, who intend evil with us, the evil eye, sorcery and magic and all of that. Begin of Ramadan, you pray Fajr and Jama'ah, you sit and you open this booklet, and you recite the adhkar, the ad'iyah, whether the verses and uh, invocations of the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and say Astaghfirullah a hundred times, Subhanallah wa bihamdihi, Subhanallah al -Azim, another hundred times, until sunrise, then 15 minutes later you can pray the duha, uh, two rak'ahs uh, at least, and you earn the reward of performing hajj, and Umrah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from all of us. Uh, we're going to take a short break and inshallah resume after that. So stay tuned. <laughs> Islam deals with prisoners of war. Umar ibn Abdul Aziz told his son a very important policy that has been used now by so many jurists to address some contemporary issues. He used to pray 1,000 rak'ah. 1,000 rak'ah. Maybe we wouldn't understand how they managed to pray 1,000 rak'ah. There is an element of barakah that Allah Jalla wa Ala gives to certain people. Who is going to allow me to marry their daughters? I am a poor person. I don't have money. I only have two dirhams. Who would accept me to marry their daughters while I'm in that devastated situation? Sayyid ibn al-Nusayyib said, oh. And he gave his instructions that when they send something, they should use 
either a piece of paper or a piece of skin in proportional to what they have written. Do you want to call this as uh, caring about environment? Do you want to take uh, to consider this as a matter of worrying about the wealth of Muslims? <laughs> Staff at Koga would like to wish you a wonderful and blessed Ramadan. Welcome to returning to Allah. Why should we return back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? This shows us that minor sins really are not minor. Minor sins put together turn into major sins. Who are you sinning against? Who are you disobeying? You're disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The one who created you and your parents and your children and your friends and your family. The best of you is the one who turns back to Allah. The entire staff at Korea would like to wish you a wonderful and blessed Ramadan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back. Uh, we did have uh, Himdan from United Arab Emirates. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Uh, my question is, is it permissible to get a loan from an Islamic bank? Okay. Yeah, that's it. Thank you, Himdan. Uh, Sister Mariam from Jordan and also Ummu Najwa yesterday from the KSA uh, shared the same question almost, that uh, the wife is staying with the children in one country by herself uh, in order to preserve their children or for education or whatever, while the husband is working in another country. I'm not going to talk about the States. The husband is in America now. I'm not going to talk about this part for now. Is it permissible? It is permissible whenever it is necessary for the husband to travel abroad in order to earn his living as long as he's going to a place that is lawful for him to reside and stay in. And uh, we worry a lot about preserving our children and in the midst of that we forget about ourselves. Are we uh, immune against any infection in, uh, in the non-Muslim societies? Are we perfect? Do you think that the adults or the father or the mother uh, would be immune and will not be affected by the negative effect of the non-Muslim societies? Of course not. That's why I, got, I, I come now to the second part of the question, which is traveling to a non-Muslim country just for the sake of earning and making a living. The scholar said it is permissible to stay in or to travel to a non-Muslim country for one of the following reasons. Seeking knowledge that is not available in a Muslim country or for a treatment or for giving da'wah. I'm traveling with the intention of giving da'wah. That's why I'm staying there. Other than that, do you consider it illegitimate? Wallahu ta'ala, a'la a'la. But uh, what you're doing, Sister Maryam and Ummu Najwa, uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help you. As long as you do not travel alone without uh, a male mahram. Uh, for instance, your husband drops you there and you're living with family members. Even if you don't have uh, a male mahram, uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect you and help you to achieve uh, what pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whether I like that or not, I like to see uh, the children being raised amongst their parents. But it requires a lot of sacrifices. And it requires a very serious and powerful decision from uh, a couple who have strength in making such decision. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unite you all and uh, assist you financially. Assalamu alaikum. Khadija from United Arab Emirates. Assalamu alaikum, Sister Khadija. Wa alaikum salam, ya Sheikh. Wa alaikum salam, ya Sheikh. Ya Sheikh, I have a problem with my husband. He doesn't pray, he sometimes hides. Now, during fasting, he takes breakfast instead of the sahur I give him. He does not, he, he, he doesn't pray at all? Him, stay with him. Khadija. 
He doesn't pray at all. He sometimes pray because I'm seeing him on my own. I force him to pray. Mm. And I have children with him. I have four children and I love him dearly. I don't know what to do. Mm. Okay. Jazakumullah khair. Inshallah I will answer you and I will address your husband as well in my talk. Uh, Sister Nadia from the KSA, Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Nadia, mute your TV, please. Hello? Mute your TV set. Hello? Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. son so is it um, permissible for us to give him zakat yani as a brother he is jobless but he is of course is his uh, son and son is earning so is his only his son is responsible for him or we can give zakat is he eligible for the zakat is he poor yeah uh, they are uh, of course they, uh, if he is poor then his brother then his brother can give him can pay him the zakat Okay, if he's poor and eligible. Okay, but uh, and uh, okay, but uh, and if, uh, for example, the people they have mobiles and television in their homes, are they? Okay. Uh, we can give the zakat to them. Carrying a cell phone is not an indication that the person is rich. Every person now carries a mobile phone. It's a mean of food for a day or night. So that's why I ask you, is he eligible for the zakah? Is he eligible to take the zakah from an outside people, not his brother? From an Islamic center or an Islamic organization, they look for poor people and they categorize this person as poor. He is in need for money to survive. He doesn't have a job. So in this case, if he is poor, can a brother give his poor brother the zakah? Yes, he can. Okay? I don't judge whether he's rich or poor because he's carrying a mobile phone. Oh, of course, if he's uh, after always the latest phone, so he gets the i4, and whenever there is a, an up-to-date, he runs after it. This is an indication this person is not poor, okay? But he's close to you, and you know better whether he is poor and in need. and then I send some money to my family and so on. Mm. So am I to pay a zakat on what I'm doing because I do not save at present anything and I'm in a hard time working hard to come up. What I'm getting is not sufficient for my family and for the rent. Mm. So am I to pay any zakat in such case? First of all, may Allah provide for you and make you rich, richness that they would not mislead you. I mean. Uh, second, Abu Abdullah, we determine whether you should pay zakah or not based on the following fact. If somebody possesses money, whether cash or stock or investment in any form or, uh, or shape, uh, which is equivalent to the value of either 595 gram of silver or 85 gram of gold. Nowadays, gram of gold is how much times 85? So we say, for instance, uh, uh, 8,000, 9,000, Allah knows as, uh, as of today, how much are the prices. You look in the paper, and if you think that you have 8,000, which is the value of the minimum nisab, then in this condition, have you kept this for a whole year, since last Ramadan, for instance, until this Ramadan, then anything, uh, as long as you possess the nisab, then you have to pay zakah on it. If you do not possess this amount, then you're poor, and you're eligible for the zakah, you do not owe any zakah to be paid. Okay, jazakumullah khairan. If, we, if, if you have a chance to review the program of fiqh of zakah, which we recorded and it was aired first last Ramadan, uh, you might find it on YouTube as well for San al-Haq. Download this program. It helps you a great deal in understanding uh, the concept of zakah, who should pay zakah, and who's eligible to take the zakah, and zakah on different subjects, livestock, 
uh, uh, vegetations, fruits, if they're zakatable, and, who's, uh, and, uh, and, and how much is the rate, and so on. Uh, <clears throat> Hamdan also asked uh, about the imsak, and he gave an example that in wherever he's at in the United Arab Emirates, they told him that the imsak is, um, for instance, 219, then Fajr is at 229. The imsak, which you uh, uh, term, which you see on the calendar, is just an indication that you are approaching the imsak time. Because the actual imsak or withholding is at Fajr. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَكُلُوا وَشْرَبُوا حَتَّى يَتَبَيَّنَ لَكُمُ الْخَيْطُ الْأَبْيَضُ مِنَ الْخَيْطُ الْأَسْوَدِ مِنَ الْفَجْرِ This time is been determined in the calendars and the prayer times as the prayer schedule as Fajr time. So if the Adhan is 2.29, then that is the actual imsak time. Anything before that is just an indication you're approaching the dead line and the end of time. But you still can eat and drink, of course, after the sign which says imsak, as long as it is not the same as Fajr time. One is allowed to eat and drink until they hear the adhan. Wallahu alam. Uh, Yahya from the KSA, wearing clothes beneath the ankles for men is forbidden, as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, فَهُوَ فِي النَّارِ Some scholars said, uh, that is only if the person is shown off, or is doing this out of arrogance, and the text is clear, and uh, most of the scholars said, we must stick to what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, that one should not lower his clothes beneath the ankles. That's for men. Uh, What's really uh, funny and sad is that you see the opposite. That men want to wear long clothes, long pants, dragging them behind them. And women who are supposed to wear long clothes and long outfit are shortening their clothes. It's getting up and up furthermore. So, <clears throat> as far as the sister uh, Fawziya's question from Nigeria, Tarawih and Tahajjud, and also, I got a question from uh, Brother uh, Shiraz, I believe, from United Arab Emirates pertaining the number of records of Taraweeh. I really wanted to discuss this in detail, but we ran out of time. So hopefully, inshallah, we remember next time to explain the history of Taraweeh in order to uh, convince the audience that those who are praying uh, 11 rakahs or more, they're all fine. Some people think this is an innovation. So I'm telling you beforehand, inshallah, We'll be discussing this tomorrow in details. Somebody prayed Taraweeh and prayed Witr with the Imam. Can he still pray Tahajjud? Yes, but you don't have to pray Witr second time. The hadith, which is a sound hadith, judged as sound by Sheikh Al-Albani, in which the Prophet said, La witrani fi layla. You prayed Witr once, you cannot pray Witr uh, again. Or otherwise, then it would be even. The alternative is, you pray with the Imam, until he comes to pray witch. You pray witch with him, when he makes the sleep, you get up to pray another rak'ah, so that becomes shafa or even for you, and you still owe witch by the end of uh, the tahajjud. Well, brothers and sisters, uh, I guess we did, alhamdulillah, tackle most of your questions, and we already came to the end of today's edition of Ask Uda. Until tomorrow, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect all of us, accept our deeds and help and support our brothers in Syria and feed uh, our brothers in Somalia. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته.